Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drugs Milan Unboxing. This weekend on Saturday night at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, we've got big time heavyweight action. And what can be better than that? We've got the rubber match finally, the third encounter between the Ring Magazine and WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, going up against the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Now, the fight was supposed to take place a few months ago, but then uh, uh, Fury tested positive, positive for COVID, but now it's finally happening. Now, in the last encounter, uh, Fury absolutely beat down Wilder and stopped him in seven rounds. Um, Wilder was in a bad state at the end of that fight when uh, Mark Breland threw in the towel. In the first encounter, it ended as a draw, courtesy of two knockdowns uh, by Wilder. And most people thought Fury did enough to win that encounter. Now, after a beatdown like uh, Fury gave Wilder, very few people really thought that uh, third match is a necessity. But uh, uh, it's a testament to these guys' uh, skills in marketing themselves that people are now actually quite up for it. And I'm also up for it and looking forward to this fight because Deontay Wilder uh, has knocked out everybody except uh, Tyson Fury. And uh, that makes him intriguing. He's got the one eater quitter, as Doug Fisher calls it, that big right hand that turns people's lights out. But uh, it's not going to be enough uh, against Fury, most probably. He can always land it, but Fury has proven that he can recover uh, from it or take it out of the equation. Now, in the second fight, uh, I think Fury said beforehand he was going to dominate Wilder. He's going to come forward, be aggressive, knock him out. And we all thought that was just talk to mess with Wilder's head. But then he went and did exactly that. In the first fight, he tried to box. And I think when he got knocked down with that heavy knockdown in the last round, and he got up and he started fighting back and towards the end of a fight at Wilder, but wobbly and moving him back, I think he thought in his head, hey, I can hurt Wilder and this guy can't fight going backward. And it worked the second time round. Um, what is going to happen this time round? Now, uh, Fury, uh, in my book, has got more than one way that he can win this fight. He can win it by outboxing Wilder, and uh, he's got to make certain he doesn't run into the right hand, which, well, whichever way he plays it. Or he can do what he did last time, simply dominate Wilder, push him back, and stop him. He can both win in both ways. Uh, Deontay Wilder, how is he going to reverse this? Now, uh, in a poll on the Ring Magazine's blog, uh, uh, ringtv.com uh, is a big poll with industry insiders and journalists and fighters etc and of all those people polled only one uh, Jolene Mazzoni is a matchmaker of uh, main events is picking Wilder to, to win so she will look like a genius if this happens uh, but Wilder can win because he does have a power Fury can be hurt but can he land that big bomb now for Deontay Wilder you know for me he was at his best when he won the title against Berman Stavern, the very first encounter where he was calm, he boxed behind his jab, he showed his boxing skills, and uh, he won on points uh, versus uh, Stavern, which is actually the second guy that went the distance with, uh, with uh, Deontay Wilder. But uh, that to me was the best, most balanced version of Deontay Wilder. And he needs to go back to that. What I'm not saying he should try and box Fury, because even at his best boxing like he did against Berman Stavern, Stavern is a short squat guy. Uh, he's not as tall as Fury and he's not a natural fighter to the extent that Fury is. I don't think uh, Deontay Wilder can outbox Tyson uh, uh, Fury. He's going to have to knock him down a couple of times to win on points. And uh, So I don't think he should go out to try and outbox Tyson Fury. But he should use his boxing skills in order to enable him to land that big bomb. Just throwing the right hand is not going to work. Fury knows it's coming. Uh, he's going to have to set it up with something. He's going to have to use his jab. He's going to have to use feints. He's going to have to use a left hook as well. He's got to bring everything into play. Maybe also jab Fury to a body, throw a long right to a body as Fury wants to come in. Um, he's going to have to combine his boxing skills of his power to put the power where Fury doesn't see it coming. Fury can be knocked down as we've seen. Even cruiserweights have knocked him down. Um, that is what Wilder is going to have to do. Now, can he do it? I think Wilder, in a, in a weird sense, as, as, from a pure boxing standpoint, got progressively worse when he won the title, which is funny to say because he made 10 successful title defenses. But, you know, he started relying on the power. 
against Luis Ortiz. The first fight, he was almost out of it and then came back and turned uh, Ortiz lights out. In the rematch against Ortiz, still the most impressive wins that he's got on his resume, I think. Uh, he was just standing there being outpointed, seemed unconcerned, but sure enough, a big right hand bomb turned everything around for him. Uh, I think he should know by now that's not going to work yet. So he's got a new trainer, Malik Scott. I don't know how good that combination is going to tell my friends, it's an old opponent of his. Uh, Scott, as far as I know, doesn't really have a record as a trainer. It seems like yesterday when he was still fighting. But the change is as good as a holiday. I don't think Mark Breland was really the problem. Uh, but let's see if that gels. There's all kinds of weird videos out there. But Deontay Wilder is going to have to use some boxing skills to disguise that big bomb to create an avenue for it if he's going to be successful against Fury. Fury, is he going to box or is he going to come forward? I'm betting he's going to come forward. And if Wilder hurts him, he'll go back to boxing. But uh, Wilder, I don't think, can fight really coming back when he's bullied. So I think Fury is going to go at him and try and have him, have him see those nightmares of a previous encounter. Um, Wilder's power makes it an intriguing thing what is going to happen. Historically, when a fighter stops another fighter in the rematch, that fighter will stop that fighter quicker. Uh, but there have been exceptions where the losing fighter was able to turn it around. I think the one thing that Deontay Wilder has got going for, for him is the, uh, the circumstances of a fight, it being postponed, it's been more than a year and a half of inactivity, that won't affect the, uh, his punching power, it may affect the timing and the skills, and that's something that Fury relies a bit more heavily on. And Fury has been known to sort of go mentally off the rails if you keep him out of the ring for too long, weight-wise, uh, mentally as well, he's, he's a guy who... who, who who uh, suffers from some mental health issues on occasion. So I think that that's the only thing that Deontay Wilder has got going for him, except for the big right-hand power. He's got the fact that the inactivity might favor him. Uh, Fury tested positive for COVID. If he's got some lingering effects of that, you see what it can do to a fighter like Alexander Povetkin. Um, that could have an effect as well that can favor Wilder. But Fury was out and about soon after his positive test. So. The jury is out on whether it was just a ruse or whether he just had a, one of those guys who has a very light version of COVID. So those are the X factors that might fail, favor Deontay Wilder. Um, I don't think Wilder can, can muster up the boxing skills to outbox Fury, as I've said. He can muster up the boxing skills to land that right hand uh, with more consistency. I know he can do it if he's disciplined enough and he can change his mentality a little bit. But uh, can he do it at this stage? And will Fury allow him to get settled? I, I, I doubt whether Fury is going to allow him to get, get settled into a fight. If I'm Fury, I'm going to make him, make, make him see those ghosts of a previous fight. So I'm going to have to go for uh, Tyson Fury again. I, th I, I think Deontay Wilder might last a little longer. Um, last time he also perforated an eardrum. That affects you. I think Deontay Wilder might last a little longer, but I think Tyson Fury is going to stop him somewhere around around nine, it feels to me. I, I think uh, Fury is going to be the winner again. Besides the, the main event, there's two other really great heavy fight, heavyweight fights in the undercard. There's another heavyweight rematch between uh, Robert Delanius, the Nordic Nightmare, against babyface Adam Kovnaski, the Polish-American, very popular sort of hustle and bustle brawler. Now, last time out, uh, it was supposed to be a tick over fight for Kovnaski. Robert Elanius, years ago, was a really dangerous young heavyweight contender, knocked out Samuel Peter, Sergei Lakovic back to back when it still meant something to beat those guys, and was seen as a, a really potential serious challenger to the Klitschkos. And then he sort of lots of promotional troubles, inactivity, got a gift decision in Finland against uh, Derek Chisora. And, you know, fought on and off, got knocked out by uh, uh, the French guy, Johan de Hoopa. And then, you know, quite recently got knocked out by Gerald Washington. The same guy, Wilder, knocked out in a total of defense and Kovnaski stopped it as well. So going into the fight against Kovnaski, he didn't look like he had much of a chance. But he's got the height, he's got the reach. He caught Kovnaski with a right hand in the fourth round that uh, Ref didn't uh, pick up on the knockdown. And then he, uh, he went, pounced on the hurt Kovnaski and stopped him. Big, big upset. Can he repeat? Does lightning strike twice? Now, in this instance, I see the fight a little bit different. Uh, Kovnaski is a guy with not the greatest boxing skills. 
he comes forward and he throws a lot of punches. You know, he's got this dad bod rocking that Andy Ruiz sort of look. Doesn't look like an athlete, but he's fit and he throws a lot of punches and he's aggressive. He's a crowd pleaser. But I think that, uh, I think Kovnaski was overconfident. He forgot one thing that if you can hit the other guy, especially uh, if you've a shorter guy, chances of other guys going to hit you back. And uh, Elenius hit him with a few one twos and eventually caught him. Uh, so Kovnaski for this fight is just got to uh, be a bit more smart about it. Be careful in the first few rounds. When he, when he makes contact, step around Elanius, you know, step around, move back, go all the way out or all the way in against Elanius. Don't hang there in the kill zone and go tit for tat. He's got to make that kind of adjustment because I think Robert Elanius, when he, was, when he stopped uh, uh, Adam Kovnaski, I think Elanius was breathing quite heavily and, he, and before that fourth round, even though he ran at some shots, I had a feeling that Kovnaski uh, was going to stop Elanius after another three rounds or so. Uh, and then he got caught, and to his credit, Elanius took him out of there. So, uh, if Kovnaski is just a little bit more clever, makes the adjustments, change levels a little bit, use a bit of angles, step around, put some uh, more boxing skills into it, somewhat like Deontay Wilder should do, uh, just do a few basic things, gets through the first four rounds, and later I think he's going to uh, overwhelm Robert Elanius. Elanius, for his part, start quick take Kovnaski out before he becomes a factor because he knows he can knock him out. That's what I would do if I'm Robert Elanius. But I think Kovnaski is a, fr a fresher guy. I think uh, Elanius gave his last great performance and uh, I think he, he, he might be hurt. Uh, he, it's going to be a very dangerous fight for Kovnaski earlier on, but I think he's going to weather the storm, make a few adjustments and stop Robert Elanius later in the fight. I'm thinking somewhere around the seventh round around there. He's, he's, going to, he's going to get a tiring Robert Delaneus out there because if you can stay away from that tower, you can stop Robert Delaneus. Uh, guys like Gerald Washington can do it, or Johan de Hupa, Kovnaski should be able to do the same. Just don't get careless. And then the, I think the most intriguing fight in that card is another fight between two young unbeaten heavyweight prospects. On the one hand, we've got F.A. Ajagba. The one and only, uh, based in the States, but from Nigeria. He was an Olympian for Nigeria, and he's up against a Cuban, Frank Sanchez, also undefeated who trains with uh, the Canelo Alvarez camp. Now, uh, the Cuban heavyweights, they never really pan out to their amateur expectations as pros. We've seen, uh, comes from the days of Nino Valdez, we've seen Jorge Luis Gonzalez get destroyed by Redding Bow, we've seen Orlani Solis, Mike Perez. Luis Ortiz more recently. Is Frank Sanchez going to be different? Now Sanchez is a very good boxer. I think he, his skills are, skill set is, is a bit deeper than F.A. Ajagba. He's a little bit tighter. His technique is a bit better. He's got a really good jab uh, and he moves well and he has some power as well. What he is not so great at is he doesn't, like many Cuban fighters, he feels the boxing is enough. He doesn't fight with the urgency to get a guy out of there sometimes. Um, and, and that's what worries me a bit about him going forward. I won't say he's got a low work rate, but he hasn't got as high a work rate as Ajagba when Ajagba decides to fight according to type, because Ajagba is a, is a puncher. He's got a huge right hand, there's dynamite in that right. And uh, when he is coming forward and he's throwing punches and bunches, going head, body, and getting the right hand behind that, he is effective, um, but in this fight against Jonathan Rice, he was not because I think he was overthinking it and didn't quite know what he wanted to do in his last fight. He was a knockout specialist again. But against Ajagba, uh, we've seen against Iago Kilatsa, he had Kilatsa all over the place and then got caught with a perfect right and boom, he went down. It was quite a heavy knockdown. He didn't just take a knee, but he got up, he composed himself. So I think we know a bit more than FA, about F.A. Ajagba when we know about uh, Frank Sanchez. And I think we know Ajagba has got power. We know that about Sanchez too. But we also, to me, it looks like Ajagba hasn't got the greatest chin. You know, a guy like Iago Kilat says so shouldn't drop you like that if you're the next big thing. And uh, I think his technique is not quite as uh, tight as, as Frank Sanchez. Sometimes he leans a bit too far forward. Sometimes he leaves himself open when he throws like he did against Kilatse. But I'm sure he'll be tightening things up a little bit more. So um, we have a very intriguing fight that's really a pick -em. I don't know who's going to win it. I think Ajagba needs to uh, tighten his technique, but don't overthink it and try and be a technical boxer. Come forward, throw a lot of punches 
and don't give uh, don't give uh, uh, Frank Sanchez uh, too much time to think. Sanchez, I think, is he's, he's a little bit on the outside and he's on the inside, but he can fight both ways. Uh, I don't. I, I, I think uh, Ajagba is a more long range to medium range kind of fighter. So for, for uh, Sanchez, I would try and establish that jab, show a lot of movement, and look for the openings that Ajagba is sure to present. Who is going to win? Uh, it would be nice to see another African heavyweight on the world scene. The last time we had that was Samuel Peter when he had the WBC title, and before that, Corey Sanders. But uh, it would be really, I would like Ajagba to be successful and, uh, and, and to get through this big test and uh, become a player in the heavyweight division along with the other young guns like uh, Joe Joyce has distinguished himself now, the bars regrouping me, I still have Philip Hirgovich and, uh, Hirgovich and uh, Tony Yoka uh, that needs a big test. But uh, I have a sneak suspicion that um, Sanchez just has a bit more in his arsenal and I think he'll be able to negate that right hand of FA Ajagba and I think it's going to be a good fight uh, if Ajagba is trying to box carefully, he's going to get outpointed. If he lets his hands go, I think he might, he, might, he might go ahead in this fight. But I just have a suspicion that he can be counted. And I think uh, uh, Frank Sanchez is going to counter him at some point and get him out of there. So I'm going with uh, Frank Sanchez there by a late round stoppage. So those are our big free heavyweight encounters Saturday at the T-Mobile Arena. If you've listened for so long, please give my channel a like and a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And until I see you guys again, remember to keep those hands up.